Hello, I'm Vari Beaumont, Director of Neurobiology at CHDI Foundation, a non-profit research organisation dedicated to developing therapeutics for Huntington's disease, or HD. In this issue of Neuron, we describe our work with Pfizer and our academic and CRO colleagues, evaluating whether a phosphodiesterase 10 inhibitor would present a viable symptomatic therapy for HD. HD is a debilitating hereditary disease caused by a single gene mutation that elicits a polyglutamine expansion in the Huntington protein. This clip shows 34-year-old James describing his symptoms. HD is the worst disease. How could it possibly have been given? HD is taking everything from my cognition, my, my personality, my ability to, to draw and exercise. I uh, can no longer work. You know, work. And, uh, you lost the ability to hold my son. A central tenet in HD pathophysiology is that the striatal and basal ganglia circuit components degenerate, and corticostriatal thalamocortical loops are particularly affected. These are comprised of parallel circuits that are involved in motor control, as well as cognitive and associative processing, and variable degeneration within these different loops can explain the heterogeneity of symptoms that are seen in HD patients. In the striatum, there are two types of SPNs, those originating the direct and indirect pathways. DSPNs send their output projections to the internal segment of the globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata. Cortical activation of this pathway disinhibits the motor thalamus and activates the motor cortex, driving movement. The ISPNs send their output projections to the external segment of the globus pallidus. Activation of this pathway inhibits the motor thalamus and motor cortex, terminating movement. In HD, striatal spiny neurons degenerate. Neuroanatomical evidence from patients suggests that the indirect pathway SPNs degenerate earlier than those of the direct pathway. Loss of appropriate indirect pathway inhibition of motor thalamus and motor cortex may explain the hyperkinetic or jerky symptoms in early stage HD, such as chorea movements. Later in the disease, when the DSPNs also degenerate, the go as well as the stop pathways are affected, and patients become bradykinesic with very slow movements. Over two decades of research support one eminently testable theory. Can we balance in the output between the two pathways by boosting indirect pathway activity alleviate some HD symptoms? A drug that's been shown to preferentially boost the indirect pathway more than the direct pathway in rodents is an inhibitor of the enzyme phosphodiesterase 10. This enzyme is enriched in both types of SPNs, and when inhibited leads to increased cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP levels inside the cells, but with an apparently stronger action in ISPNs. So when you give a healthy animal a PD-10 inhibitor, their movement slows down. There were two problems that we needed to think about in the use of this drug to treat HD patients after they exhibit symptoms. First, PD-10 enzyme is lost in these patients. Would further inhibition of the enzyme be possible or even useful? We looked at two HD mouse models that show progressive loss of PD-10 to a similar extent as those seen in manifest HD patients. When we gave the PD-10 inhibitor to these mice, cyclic nucleotides could still be meaningfully elevated to cause robust phosphostate changes in proteins within the HD mouse striatum. This is encouraging for anticipating patient responsiveness to the drug. Second, most HD models are hypokinesic, more like late-stage HD patients, suggesting that in mice both direct and indirect pathways are affected in parallel. This makes studying treatment for proposed hyperkinetic symptoms as a readout particularly difficult in these models. To circumvent this, we used ex vivo and in vivo electrophysiology to look at components of the basal ganglia indirect pathway in isolation. We found that when the indirect pathway was cortically activated, there was a deficit in the size of the response in the HD model, and that there were many other abnormalities in synaptic connections and in the intrinsic properties of neurons which make up the components of the indirect pathway. Despite PD-10 loss in the model, PD-10 inhibitors were effective in activating this pathway and correcting the problem. Acute elevation of both cyclic nucleotides seemed to confer benefits in both types of SPNs. We also found that raising cyclic GMP by inhibiting PD-10 
also selectively improved hippocampal LTP deficits in the HD mice. And when we dosed animals chronically, starting before their symptoms were established, we could delay some of the basal ganglia circuit phenotypes from emerging. On the basis of these findings, Pfizer has sponsored a six-month phase two clinical trial called the Amaryllis study to test a PD-10 inhibitor in HD patients for correction of predominantly motor impairment. That study is just completed and the outcome should be announced in 2017. Watch out for those results.